Hello and welcome to Qatar 365, the show that offers a fresh perspective on Doha and the local area with me, Miranda Atty. As you can see, we're here amongst Qatar's beautiful mangroves, which is appropriate as this episode is all about animals and nature. Coming up, we take to the skies at a falcon festival, find out about Qatar's plans for environmental sustainability, and meet the region's most attractive camels in a special beauty pageant. Every year, Qatar's desert setting attracts avid competitors to the International Falcons and Hunting Festival. It's one of the largest of its kind in the region, organized by Al Ghanas Association behind me. And as Shahrazad Ghaffour discovered, the festival is also deeply intertwined with the country's culture and heritage. Also known as Marmi, this attraction is held during the cooler winter months, a perfect time for falconry. And hundreds of falconers from around the region have been descending on the desert for 13 years to compete in a sport that dates back centuries. Al Ghanas Association was established in 2008 and it's an association established to serve falconers in Qatar and has worked on several large projects. One of the most important is that it runs competitions for falconers in Qatar. We have big projects, the most important of which is the Falcon Genome Project. We also have a campaign to release falcons into nature. Falconry in Qatar is a human, intangible heritage and this means that we preserve this heritage. The competitions involve speed, skill and beauty, with sought-after prizes of cash and a desert-worthy vehicle. This year we add the beautiful young peregrine falcon, this one new for this year, and also we have more falconry from Arabic Gulf, uh, more than 250 falconry from uh, Saudi Arabia, from Emirates, from Kuwait, from uh, Bahrain, and also we have more than 1,700 falconry in Marmi Festival 2022. The falcon is very, very important for Qatari people because I learned from my father and the grandfather, and uh, now I teach my children for this culture. One of the main aims of the competition is to keep the heritage alive for next generations. I participated in the Young Falconer Championship in the 2022 Marmi Festival for six to ten year olds. And there they asked me about the types of birds, accessories, the breeds and everything related to birds. And I took first place in my age category. These majestic birds of prey can live up to 22 years, competing for just four of them. But they are always respected and revered. The hood you see here on this falcon keeps it in a calm state. It helps the birds get used to their human handlers and further hones their skills during a hunt. Owners forge a very special bond with their falcon, ensuring they're in good health during any competition. Specializing in veterinary medicine is great just to be able to work with all animals, but with falcons, they have beautiful characteristics distinct from any other animals or birds. During the rest of the year, falconers can take their cherished creatures to a dedicated hospital in the heart of the city. Any surface for your bird, if it is medical, if it is lab, if it is supportive surfaces. They have a modern technology with the tradition falcons. All that new equipment from the endoscopy to x-ray to labs and with the falcon which will have a tradition behaviors so mixed together in one place is something very unique. In an ever-changing world, it's apparent that it's this uniqueness that makes the falcon worthy of protection and preservation. Protecting and preserving wildlife from extinction is one of Qatar's top goals for a more sustainable future. The country is actually home to several nature reserves that provide a haven for bird life, plants and a huge variety of animal species. And one of the people most influential when it comes to conservation is Dr Saif Ali El Hedri, a leading environmentalist. I caught up with him to find out more. We have three pillars. We have NGOs, government, and private sector. We try to work together to get better solution in the end. 
uh, and getting better result in seeing Qatar as a green area and a better place for living. Tell us about these beautiful mangroves. What was your role in recreating them? It's a give a, a beautiful area in this region. It's increasing oxygen, it's take CO2. It's also now, it's, uh, as you see, a lot of uh, animals here. Some small animals, you'll find the fox here. Uh, we have also birds, uh, insects, and also we have uh, a lot of marine life surrounding this area. And it's all about educating the next generation, right? What kind of projects do you run for young children? They are part of the system, so they are happy to see that they are also given chance uh, to share their ideas with the, with the other children and also to ask questions, to do research, to take photos and enjoy nature because then they become, uh, uh, in the future, the protection of nature. This is what we want to see. This new generation, they become also taking care about nature everywhere in the world. What do you think still needs to be done in Qatar and in the world to be more sustainable? We need first to find the best technology to Qatar. We have to have policies and strategies, which is well done. Uh, we have to educate our children not only give them knowledge, but they have to have to transfer knowledge to values and behavior. And lastly, what does it mean to you to be here amongst these beautiful mangroves? I feel happy first, not only for myself, for also surrounding nature, because I feel that we are starting to understand uh, these birds and insects, and, and uh, we are starting to look to this wildlife as part of the whole system and part of what we call it uh, responsibility of Qatar in general and, and the whole world because this is, is not for us only. This mangrove or other animal, they are cleaning the air and the air is, is moving everywhere. We feel happy that at least we do something to protect nature. And I can really feel that fresh air in my lungs right now. <laughs> Dr. Safe, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Before there were trains, planes and bikes, there were camels. They may no longer be a primary mode of transport, but these majestic creatures can be traced back throughout Qatar's history and still hold hugely important roles today, ranging from traditional camel racing to beauty pageants. These are the most stunning camels in the region. They're taking part in Qatar's annual beauty competition, where the animals are judged on four main categories. How shiny and bright their coats are, the length and width of their neck, how in proportion their heads are, how big are the lips, and how long are the eyelashes. And finally, the shape and position of their hump. Winners are identified with a special sash. The camel succeeded and outperformed her female colleagues who were in the running with her. With the length of her bones, the length of the neck, the length of the forearm, and the beauty of her head. Winning is big business, and the camels are taken special care of. Often, they're kept away from the sun and fed milk, wheat, honey, and dates before an important contest. Their prices are in the millions, unaccountable. I mean, astronomical prices. The prices they start with and how much they end up being worth, there's a huge difference. The individual ones are worth millions. Care is a special concern for individuals. They're spoiled. Owners take more care of the camels than their children. And while prize money may be impressive, reaching more than 350,000 euros, the Camel Festival was created primarily to keep traditions alive. The camel and Qatari relationship traces its roots back to the Bedouins, where camels were not only vital transportation, but also a sign of prosperity.
مهرجان قطر للابل The Qatar Camel Festival is concerned with the sports of fathers and the preservation of heritage. The Qatar Festival offers many goals by introducing the Qatari culture and introducing young people to this ancient and deep culture of the state of Qatar. And it's not just beauty the camels are revered for. Camels have enormous stamina and can survive in harsh climates. They can run for hundreds of kilometers across the desert and need only a little water to survive. And they're also very friendly. This is the Camel Racing Festival, where camels run around the track and the fastest is crowned the champion. Instead of humans, the camels have robot jockeys strapped to their backs, controlled by their owners, who race alongside in 4x4s. It attracts a large segment of participants, owners and fans who are interested in this hobby as well. Of course, the competitions are strong and millions of prizes are exceptional at this festival. Camel racing is a lucrative industry worth millions of euros. But seeing these striking creatures thundering down the track, it's also, quite simply, a race worth watching. It's been great to be out experiencing nature and meeting some of Qatar's most iconic animals. And that's all we've got time for on this episode. But if you have any questions, just reach out via our hashtag, Qatar365. Thanks for watching. Do check out Euronews.com for more. And join us again next time on Qatar365.